two things you can learn from the game I'm about to show you. Number one, never give up. Number two, when you're losing, keep attacking your opponent's king and creating threats, and you never know what might happen. This was a game that I played a few days ago. It was a three-minute game with two-second increment. That means I get two seconds added every move. Let's take a look. This did not end as I expected. So I played d4. C5, not super familiar with the Benoni, honestly, as far as the theory, so I just pushed by. And then F5, another move that really caught me off guard here, and I was trying to think of what to do. Now, the, the move that I played is going to look really weird to you guys. It's going to look really weird, but I'm going to explain why I played it. H3. Now, at first glance, like, dude, you're not developing your pieces. You're playing a random pawn move. What's going on, Nelson? Let me explain to you why I played this move by showing you a different opening. So I'm going to open up a new tab here. All right, so I've got the new tab here. And D4, F5, this is called the Dutch defense. And there's actually an opening trap. I've done a video on this in the channel a long time ago. It's pretty old, but a lot of you, I'm sure, have seen it. And it starts with the move H3. And most people who play the Dutch will play knight to F6. And you play G4. And then it looks like you're giving away this pawn for free, but you play the move queen to d3, attacking on h7. Now, black has a couple of options. If they play h6 to kind of block you off, checkmate in one move, okay? So most people who are, you know, smart enough to see that are going to go back with the knight. But then you take here anyway, and it doesn't matter how black takes you. This is still checkmate. It's an amazing little trap, right? Both of these captures lead to checkmate. So I had this idea in the back of my mind, okay, this kind of position right here where you play h3 and g4. So if I jump back to the game, now you can maybe understand why I played h3. I really, d5 and c5 don't really change too much about what happened with that trap. There's still the, the checkmate idea over here. And so I thought I'd go for it, okay? So knight f6, g4. And now my opponent plays d6. Now, as soon as they play d6, the whole point of me having a checkmate over here doesn't exist anymore because now the king has an escape route, right? So this was a good move by Black. They probably were familiar with that trap and, and you know, knew enough to not fall for that. So I just said, let's just develop, okay? And I still played queen to d3, trying to create some sort of tactical tricks. Like maybe I could sacrifice here at some point and bring the queen in. Like, let's just say maybe Black would have brought the knight here. Maybe it could still work is kind of what I was thinking, right? So black plays g6, kind of onto my tricks, and then I played a terrible move, a really, really terrible move. And the only thing, the only way I can explain this is sometimes you get an idea in your head so much that you just are like, you almost get stubborn with it, right? Like, I'm just going to play this. I know it's probably not good, but I'm just going to play it anyway. That's kind of the attitude that I had when I played this move. Like, I could see what was going to happen. He's going to take me. He's going to block with the rook, and I didn't really see a follow-up. So why did I play it? I, I don't know. It was a bad decision. And, you know, <laughs> essentially, I'm just down a rook. After rook f7, I'm just down a rook. I mean, I don't have any really compensation. If anything, black is more developed than I am. Like, black has two pieces out. I only have one piece out. All my pieces are on the back rank. I have nothing. I, I literally have nothing. Black's going to just develop and castle. And what am I going to do? So minus four, you can see minus 4.3 there on the eval bar. Uh, but I didn't give up. And I said, you know what, let me just keep trying to play good moves. So bishop to h3, I thought, let me just develop. Maybe if he takes me, I can bring my knight in here like this to create uh, an attack on the pinned rook, right? It's something. He goes back and attacks my queen. I go here. He moves over. I brought the bishop out. There was an attack on my knight here. And so I figured let's develop a piece and block the threat at the same time. I'm still totally losing. He goes here. I go here. We do a little back and forth. I was fine repeating because I'm totally lost. Obviously, he doesn't want that. So now he plays knight b to d7. And again, black's position is totally fine. I mean, look at this. Everything is defended. He's got an extra rook. If I had a rook on h1 over here, you know, we'd probably have an even position. But I'm just missing a rook, right? <laughs> so, yeah, definitely thought about resigning. But I said, you know what? Let's, let's just keep playing, right? Let's just see what happens. So brought my knight out. Queen to a5, castles, and now black castles as well. And black has really solved all his problems. He doesn't have any weakness to his king anymore. The king has gone to the other side of the board, and he's got that extra rook, okay? Also has an advantage on the clock. So, like, literally everything about this is favoring black, okay? But I said, you know what? Let me keep applying the pressure. And I did notice that when he castled, he actually put his knight 
into a pin. So this knight can no longer move. So I said, okay, if I take here and he takes me back, I can at least grab a pawn. It's, it's something, right? So that's what I did, took the pawn. And everything is defended, but black does have to be a little careful because there are some, you know, threats and some things that I'm attacking. So he plays bishop to h5, totally fine. I brought my knight in trying to, you know, go for a fork. It's pretty obvious, but I was just trying something, rook to g6. And there's actually, if you notice the eval bar, there's actually a problem with this move. If you would like to pause, what do you think I played here and why? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, I played bishop takes d7. And there's an interesting thing going on here. See, right in this position, if I were to, to capture that, he could always just take with this rook and everything is fine. But as soon as he moves that rook, now when I take on d7, he can't take with the rook or the bishop on f8 is left undefended. And I'm going to just win a piece and get a nice attack going, actually. So that's kind of the problem Then he takes with the king. But now it allows me to do something else. What do you think I played here? Well, if you looked at that, the move is queen to f5. And this is an important concept. Whenever your opponent's king is kind of like coming out into the open and you're trying to keep attacking it, you always want to ask yourself, where is it most likely going to try to run to? Okay, and in this case, where's the safest place for black's king? Probably back this way, like this, right? So if I can stop black from doing that, it's probably going to be a good move for me. So now, you know, I have to move my queen somewhere. Where do I move it to? Well, queen to f5 is the, really the only logical move because it stops the king from going back. Now, he can go to c7, which he did, but that sets me up for a fork, and now I'm winning back some of that material that I had lost. So I brought the knight in. He takes. And which way should I capture the rook? With the queen or with the pawn? This is a good moment to pause and think about that yourself. All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, you have to take with the pawn, which I did, not because, you know, there's anything wrong, generally speaking, with taking with the queen, but in this case, what is what does I mean, what happens? The d5 square is now open for my knight and my rook. And, you know, and so that's why taking with the pawn is so much better in this case. Also, it's a pass pawn, which could be used as a threat, which we'll see in just a minute. And so, yeah, after this, I'm actually just winning, which is fascinating. But, uh, yeah, Black's king is in trouble. My king is very safe. And this knight's about to become a monster, right? So black goes back here. It's actually a blunder. I missed this in the game because I was already kind of thinking ahead of what I wanted to do. And so I didn't just, I didn't see that I could just take the bishop, but I still had a pretty good position here and I forked these guys. Okay. Now, as you can see, not as good um, as what I could have done. Let's actually see. I don't actually remember what was the best one. Yeah. Just taking it was just so much better. I just needed to take that. Anyway, black plays here, which was a mistake. I played uh, e3 to block the check, and there's a nice finish here that I want to show you guys. Queen to e6, so I'm attacking two things here at the same time. Black's getting a little low on time. Plays queen takes a2, going on the offensive, but it really wasn't the time. Black just doesn't have time for this. And if you would like to pause, how did I finish off the game from here? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is queen takes d6 check. We actually don't need, even need to worry about the bishop. Taking here leads to a forced checkmate. So if the rook blocks, then I simply can take it and then come down here for checkmate. And then if the king goes over, there's a really nice checkmate here. Again, if you'd like to pause, what is it? All right, well, if you looked at that, it's the move knight to c7. And here my opponent resigned, I believe, or ran out of time or something. Uh, I don't remember exactly. But the point is that if the rook takes, this is checkmate. And if the king goes here, we have the famous smothered checkmate. So this is a pattern you're going to want to remember. If you've never seen this before, pay attention. Queen behind the knight lined up with the king, and you move the knight to create the double check. And this is important because if it wasn't a double check, the queen could just take or the pawn could just take. But because it's also check with my queen, black has no option except to move out of the way. And this allows me to bring the queen in which forces the, oh, my mouse just froze. Sorry, guys. <laughs> mouse totally just froze. Um, forces the rook to take, okay, because the king can't take here because of the knight. But after the rook takes, we get this beautiful smothered checkmate with the knight, okay? So it's, a, it's one of the funnest and most satisfying checkmates, in my opinion, to pull off. And it's very common when you have the queen and the knight lined up on the king like this, okay? And so that's what I, you know, kind of noticed right here was that if I take this, it looks like we're going to have a smothered mate opportunity. And you, you pair that with the, the back rank mate, 
possibility as well, um, like this, and it's just it's just over. So I should never have won this game. I mean, if we go back a few moves, I'm down a rook. I have no compensation at all, and I just kept playing and kept making threats and waiting for that moment when my opponent might make a mistake, and they did, and I was able to capitalize on it. So never give up. Keep making those threats, playing aggressive, and be ready when your opponent does make the mistake. It can turn in an instant, okay? If it happens at the 2200 level, it happens more often at lower levels, all right? So hope you guys enjoyed that and learned a thing or two as well. I'll see you next time. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.